So today I want to address something that I've been getting a lot of emails on lately. I, uh, I get a lot of emails from new drivers, people that have just got their CDL. Uh, some of them, well, a lot of them are the associate to driver program, which is where we hire people, you know, that already work for Walmart and they land up, you know, going on this program and then they've never drove truck before and they get their license. But I've, I've had both where I've had people that work for other companies that just got their license, but they all have the same issue. And it's the overwhelmed feeling that is just exhausting and trying to feel like they have to live up to something. And I, I really do think it's dangerous. I think it's not a good thing at all. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, most of the time when you're being trained, whether it be another company or whether it be Walmart, it doesn't matter. You're being trained by somebody that they've probably been driving 20, 30 years. And so we're used to a certain type of lifestyle. Examples like eating on the run, you know, instead of stopping somewhere to have lunch or, um, you know, not getting out as often, maybe driving long distances, um, you know, if we do just quickly use the restroom and then get going again. And, you know, that's fine. I mean, if you've been doing it, well, this January, it'll be 23 years I've done it. I'm used to it. I mean, it doesn't bother me a bit. It actually makes my day go by faster, and I enjoy that. But for somebody that's never drove before, that's extremely overwhelming. And so these are the emails I've been getting lately. And I'm not going to read the email straight to you. I'll just give you an overall. Because um, one email in particular, it seemed like you really hit it on the number there on what this is all about. And so he writes, uh, yeah, you know, I'd, I'm not sure if I want to keep going on with this. Maybe I made a mistake. Um, you know, I feel like I want to quit. Um, the reason why is because the guy that's training me or the guys, there's actually multiple ones. They, uh, they don't want to stop and eat. They just want to eat while sitting in the seat. Um, you know, just quickly get a snack or whatever. Uh, restroom breaks you know, only necessity and basically whatever your destination is, like get there as soon as you possibly can, like no waste whatsoever, like stopping, smelling the roses, getting out and stretching your legs. And like I said, for someone like me that's been doing it 23 years, it sounds great to me. Let's do it. <laughs> but for new drivers, you know, you got to put yourself in their position. And so I got some advice for the new drivers, um, you know, whether it's associate to driver program or if it's you work for another company. And the advice is this, you know, th you don't want to compromise safety. Whether you work for Walmart or anywhere else, you never want to compromise safety. Because if you mess up, you know, you're done with working wherever you're working at, most likely. And you could be in a lot of trouble and find yourself in a courtroom because somebody got killed or something. Totally not worth it. You know, the human mind um, can only take so much pressure and it'll start fouling up and you'll start making mistakes if it's too much pressure on you. And so, you know, I get it when you're with your trainer, you kind of got to do what they say. But like I tell people, I mean, that's for a short amount of time. I get the associate to drivers is 12 weeks. That's actually pretty long. But like other companies, you're not with the trainer very long. And the thing to know is, you know, as long as you're not late with the load, then what are you worried about? You know, put your ETD in, and I think most companies are the same. You basically put in your hours that you're going to have available when you get to where you're at and you know in what time you'll be there to get your next dispatch well as long as you're not late then take all the time you need within reason and don't be late and if for some reason they give you something that doesn't allow you to do that well here at walmart that's not a problem if you tell them hey this is like to the wire you know i don't want to be stressed out and having to go fast that's safety and they're not going to hold that against you. At least I've never seen that. Other companies, well, you might have a problem. You know, they may be like, well, that it's this or nothing. So, 
you might have to think about a different place to work. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I like Walmart so much. And, uh, you know, you don't have to deal with stuff like that as much. So when I mean take all the time you want that you need, this is what I mean by that. So let's say that you're driving to a store or a location of some sort and, you know, it takes, let's say it takes four hours to get there. You know, your average, let's say the speed limit's 55 miles an hour. So your drive time should average about two to three miles under what the speed limit of that state or that highway is. So if it's 55 miles an hour, then if you can average 52 mile an hour, 53 mile an hour, you're great. I, I really wouldn't push it any more than that. Um, if it needs to be less, that's fine. I know in a lot of cases you can't even get near that because of traffic or it's a city or, or weather or whatever. I get that. But I'm talking about perfect conditions, easy, straight, wide open road. Um, you're not going to go wrong with that. You know, if you're doing a drop and hook, um, yeah, give yourself at least a half hour. I mean, yeah, I know it can be done in 15 minutes, but give yourself a half hour. If that's what you need, do that. If it's a live unload, oh, definite minimum 45 minutes. And if you've been to the place before and you know it's really bad there, go ahead and throw in an hour, a couple hours, whatever it needs to be. I mean, you know better than anybody else if you've been there before. And the thing is, is that just doing those couple things that I'm talking about, that's going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, another thing would be if you go into your distribution center or if you're with another company, you're going into one of your, one of your um, I don't know what you'd call them, but one of your uh, hubs or whatever, and you figure, well, you can make it in and out of there within an hour. Well, take an hour and a half if you need to. I mean, I get it. You want to make all the money you can. But if you're a new driver, you know, you don't really have that luxury just yet. I mean, you really need to take the stress off of you. And that's the idea with the whole thing. You know, take extra time for when you're in your distribution center. Take extra time when you're, <coughs> excuse me, when you're at a store or a location picking up. And, you know, you really should get out and de-stress. And you really should be getting out anyway along the way. You should be checking the tires. I mean, if it's a 200-mile trip and you don't get out, what if you had a flat tire, like, in the first 50 miles of the trip? I mean, that's a long ways to run with a flat tire. You may not know it. It could land up doing damage. You really need to just get out and walk around a little bit. You know, stretch your legs. I mean, what company is going to hold it against you to go and use the restroom? You know, in a 200-mile trip, maybe you need to use the restroom twice or three times. You know, that's not, you know, that's not unreasonable. And so all I'm saying is, is that you're the captain of your ship, even though some of these companies will kind of make you feel like you're not the captain of your ship. But you got to do what you got to do. And I know the fear of being fired or the fear of, you know, not making money. You know, that I get that, but it doesn't outweigh what could happen. You know, uh, like I said, in the emails that I've read, and especially the one I'm thinking about right now is, is that this person is exhausted. You know, they're like, they're saying, uh, well, my mentor, he wants me to drive all 11 hours, like 10 hours, 45 minutes or whatever. You know, and as a truck driver, I totally get that. I mean, I try to do 10 hours and 45 minutes or 10 and a half, 11. I, you know, I try to stay away from that because you're going to land up going over. Um, but, you know, most of the time I get about 10 and a half to 10 and three quarter hours. And, you know, as a new driver, you know, I think you've set the bar too high, at least in the beginning. I mean, at the absolute maximum, when you hit the 10th hour, you need to start looking for a place to pull over because it may take 30 minutes or 40 minutes or something. Or maybe even at nine and a half hours, start looking for a place to pull over. Maybe you've got some places in mind you should anyway because you pre-planned your trip knowing that you're going to run out of hours in the middle of this trip. And so, you know, de-stress yourself. This is how you de-stress yourself. Get out, go somewhere and eat, or at least stand outside and eat. Don't sit in your truck and eat. 
you know, it's illegal to eat anyway while driving. A lot of people don't know that. Um, you know, I don't know if that's the same in every state, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be eating and drinking while driving. Well, what truck driver doesn't have his coffee right there and eating something while driving down the road? I get that. But as a new driver, forget all that. Stop. Eat. You know, get out, stretch your legs. Give yourself extra time at the distribution center, at the store, at the vendor. You know, cut the day shorter, um, maybe shorter than what it should be. And it's not forever. I mean, we, we get into this mindset thinking that, well, this is it. This is how I drive. You know, I'm not meeting the standards that all these other truck drivers are doing. First of all, don't even compare yourself or worry about other truck drivers. You just worry about you and do every step like what I'm talking about. And if you can find some others and, and you know, implement that too, to de-stress yourself. Because if you're out here and you're stressed and you're feeling like you want to quit and, and maybe you're mad or, or upset, angry, whatever, you're a danger to yourself and you're a danger to other people on the road. And, you know, I, I just feel bad for people that work in some of these companies where they don't care. They're just like, we don't want to hear any of that. Either get it there on time. I get that you should have left yesterday. Oh, well, get it there on time. You know, it, for one, you probably picked a bad company. And two, um, maybe you need to get away from that company. And that may be easy for me to say when you got to pay the rent or, you know, take care of your family or whatever. It's harsh. I get it. But it's better than you not... You know, if you get in a horrible accident, get yourself killed or someone else or get yourself put in jail. Um, I think I'd rather face the whole I'm looking for another job or, you know, they're mad at me at work because I didn't rush and do what they wanted. I'd rather face that than what could happen. So, I mean, these are just some ideas for new drivers. You know, you're, you're used to working an eight hour day. Um, you know, you're used to getting, you know, sleeping in your bed at night sitting down at tables to have meals and all that. And then your life is completely turned upside down because immediately all that's out the window and you're just straight up working 14 hours and eating snacks along the way and, you know, sleeping in a sleeper and secluded away from, you know, people that you love or care about. And, uh, yeah, you got to take care of yourself. So I hope some of those tips help you. But it is absolute importance that you take responsibility to de-stress yourself. Take a conscious effort where you think about it and go, I'm going to take extra time and everything. And then slowly, as you get more used to driving in the long hours, you can incrementally, you know, start to back off on that and get a little tighter on your schedule and that kind of thing. So uh, that's what I got for you today. And I hope it helps. These new drivers out here that just got their CDL, you know, don't give up. There really is good rewards at the end if you work for a place like Walmart or there's other jobs too. And, you know, at some point you're going to make it look easy too after you've been out here for a number of years, five, six, seven, eight, ten years, whatever it is. And you'll think, in your, you'll think to yourself, it's so easy now. But don't ever forget that, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of a life change. It's a lot of work. So uh, that's what I got for you, and I will catch you guys next week.